All right, team, in today's video, I'm gonna take you for a walk through my uh, homemade boiler and uh, my steam tanks, which I use to sterilize all my mushroom substrate. Before we embark on this video, I want to make sure you are all wearing your safety crocs, like I am. Crocs are an integral part of the safety apparatus and are very important for protecting you while working with mushrooms. So this is my sterilization system and it consists of three parts. We have the boiler here, which can heat up water to um, just below 100 degrees centigrade. Um, my steamer tanks over here, which I use to fill the substrate, and then we pump the steam into them. And a PID controller, which is up on the wall behind me. I don't know if you can see that um, quite in the shot, but it's up there. So this system here is currently in operation, which means the water in here, which will be filled up to about there, is sitting just below boiling or about probably 98, 99 degrees. And every time the PID cycles on, what it does is it boils the water in there, the water then gets, uh, the, the steam, sorry, gets pumped down this hose and um, into my steam tank there. It heats the substrate up in the steam tank to 95 degrees, which I have it set at, and then any uh, excess pressure gets vented out the top through that pipe there, and you'll see that pipe runs down the other side and uh, into a just a container with water there, and that condenses the steam back into water. And that's so I don't have um, steam blowing out and around around the place where I'm working. Um, it's not so problematic in summer, but in winter when it gets icy out here, with the steam coming out of there, it actually forms ice all under the under the cover in here. Basically, anything that steam touches turns to ice. So that's why I've got the condenser there. So this has been running for about 20 hours now. I usually run it between 20 to 24 hours. I've heard of people running it for less time. Um, I just basically haven't tested yet the shortest amount of time I can run it. And I like to just run it um, until I know I've got a definite sterilization. So I usually run it between 20 to 24 hours, um, 20 being the minimum. Uh, it's really thermal efficient. Um, what I've covered them here in is um, this stuff here. Now these are about $10 camping roll mats. There are like, I think it's a closed cell foam on one side and a foil backing. Now I've got two layers on each one of these and, um, and that's, that does a really great job at um, holding that temperature in. Um, at night when it's reasonably warm now but it's quite warm here. But at night once the temperature drops, if you were to feel the side of that, you wouldn't feel much warmth coming through that um, at all. And that's the same with the, the boiler here, it's got two layers on it. Um, if the steam does hit this, it does start to melt it, but only once the steam hits it. Um, if it's just touching the um, outdoor, uh, the, sorry, the, the exposed metal, um, it doesn't melt. Um, and it keeps its shape and it uh, retains its insulation properties, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, that is nice and cheap, that stuff there. Um, so you can really, you can really go to town and covering stuff in that and it, um, it does a really good job in insulating. So what we'll do guys is we'll wait for the system to cool down. It's due to shut off uh, soon, an hour or two. We'll wait till it's shut off. We'll let this cool down a bit and we'll crack it open. Um, I'll show you just how this is built, the boiler. Um, and we'll also wheel this full barrel out of here and we'll wheel a cold one in there, cold empty one, and we'll have a look at that as well. All right guys, so uh, our steriliser has finished its cycle and I've turned off uh, the boiler back here. So what we do now is we disconnect the pipe from the top, which I've already done. We simply take that pipe off and there's a, there's a little valve here which we can seal the, seal the drum with. Down here there's another valve and I simply turn that valve to shut and then there's, uh, there's a little release joint here which you can actually release the pipe straight off. And um, these fittings here, they're like fittings you'd get for, for home brewing or whatnot, and that fitting there simply just slots back in there and um, clamps on like so. Um, so once I disconnect that, um, I disconnect the top pipe and I also disconnect the, um, the, thermo, uh, the thermocouple wire which goes up to the PID. I'm ready to wheel this barrel out of the way. So we'll wheel that out of the way now and we'll get our, um, our, our fresh empty barrel in there of which we'll be uh, loading up shortly. It's that easy. 
So the barrel that's just completed its cycle has gone off. Just I leave it over there to cool down, and we've got our new barrel in here. Um, you would have noticed that on the other one, there's actually another sleeve which goes over the top. This is just to provide this metal here with some insulation, because that metal there is going to radiate heat when this is hot. And so we just want to make sure all the metal has got um, a layer of that insulation around it, just to try and keep that heat uh, inside the barrel. So all my barrels have a, um, a quick read uh, thermometer on the top here and again this is just a thermometer for brewing but um, it works perfectly in these barrels um, and I've also got this just this little piece here which um, provides it a bit of extra insulation just to heat uh, insulate the metal under there because that is quite warm but um, I have I have these on there um, so I can just walk past and quickly glance at the temperature um, also so when I wheel it away like it is now um, for the next two or three days that will give me a pretty accurate representation of um, how much heat's still in there and it's going to take a few days um, to go from 60 uh, down to 40 and down to about 20 uh, and once it's at 20 I'll be able to open it and uh, inoculate all the substrate in there. Just to quickly show you what this uh, sleeve I've got over top does is that once you um, fill the barrel up and seal it you actually um, can just slot the sleeve over like this and that provides um, extra insulation for this uh, metal ring around there. Now this cost me cents, to, a couple dollars to make maybe. Um, and this has been working for six months or so. Um, and it really is brilliant. I mean, it, it may appear to be cheap and rudimentary, but it, um, it simply just does the job brilliantly. So I haven't really even bothered making something more, um, more permanent. Um, and I'm happy with that. We'll open this barrel now and we'll go inside and just show you um, what it is. So we've obviously got the lid here. And that just uh, un unclamps like that, and the whole lid and ring comes off. Um, now on the back side of that, it's just um, that's just a, a a fitting which goes through to this uh, this uh, ball valve here, which I connect my um, exhaust hose to, um, and that's just the spike there for the that that um, thermometer which is on top there, which tells me what the temperature is. So that's all pretty um. It's all pretty straightforward. You'll actually see down there there's like a mesh, um, like a mesh false floor. This can actually be lifted right out. Um, and that keeps the, the substrate off the bottom about four, four inches or so, five inches maybe. Um, and that allows water, water will condensate in here and will drip to the bottom. Um, and it allows a bit of that to catch a bit of water at the bottom, so it keeps the, keeps the substrate bags off that floor. Um, and then once, usually about four hours after I turn this on, I will actually drain the water through that uh, plug at that, sorry, not that plug, that um, connection at the bottom, and we'll get all that um, initially uh, reasonably cold water out. Um, you only need to drain it once, about four or five hours after you've started it, and then it will last 24 hours without, um, without collecting much more water at all. Uh, this here is my connector at the bottom. It's obviously just another ball valve um, with this quick release joint which, um, which mates onto that there. Um, and as you can see I've just taped a little bit of extra insulation around that because this metal does radiate a lot of, um, a lot of heat during a cold night. Alright guys, now we'll have a look at my homemade boiler. Now the first strange thing you might notice about this homemade boiler is there's actually a couple of 20 kilo weight plates off the top. Now I have to lift them on and off each time I use it. And the reason I do this is because I want to become Mr. Olympia. Right, so we'll get these plates off. That one's really quite hot. And you'll see what's under these plates is... um. This is K-Flex insulation, I think it's called K-Flex, um, and it's actually got, gotten quite squished, this is just a spare piece I had. Um, but once I take this off, you'll notice what that is, is this here is simply just a large stock pot. That's it. Made a boiler out of a large stock pot. And what I did to seal the top is I actually created a, um, a silicon bead around, around the edge of that, and when you, when you sit the lid on top with the insulation and the two weights, it's enough weight to keep the pressure, the little bit of pressure that builds up in there, to keep that down. Um, this also acts as a safety. If, um, if this blocks or if I have my valve down here off, um, this here just pops up and, um, and starts venting the steam out the side. 
Um, that is going to be really hot to the touch and I don't want to give myself a steam burn so we'll get this lid off and we'll have a look. Perfect. You can actually see the steam coming out of that. Right, we'll just get some safety gloves on first. I've got the safety crocs on. There we go. So that's the lid. Now to make a to make a seal around this, all I did was lie line the top rim of the stock pot with Vaseline or petroleum jelly. Um, and then along this bead here, I put lots of um, silicon, uh, the silicon sealant, and then I push this onto the top, put a bit of weight on it, and let that cure for 24 hours. And then I was able to peel the top off um, and create this uh, nice silicon gasket around here. So that's what creates the seal. Right, so the top's off and it's just allowed to steam out and cool down a bit. I'll just take you through the two connections we have on the front. Um, this one here, um, all it is is actually a silicon, a silicon tube with these with a fitting there, and um, it connects straight into the side of um, of my um, stock pot here with a brewery fitting, a brewing fitting. Um, you can actually see I've got K flex on this on this as well. Um, and after a while, the K flex you can see some in there, and that actually started out that big. And as it um as it as it as it sits under that sort of hundred degree heat, ninety nine degree heat for a long time, it actually gets it shrinks and shrinks. So you can see each time it shrinks more, I end up, I end up putting more pieces on the end. But um, so that just plugs straight into the connection on the um, uh, my steam tank. Um, and when when the lids on that with the 40 kilos and that boils in there, the air just the hot steam just gets pumped out that part there. So wherever you connect that to, it's going to heat up. Um, the other connector connector I have here is just a um, it's one for like indoor plumbing for a tap. And that goes into a ball, ball cock on the inside, which we'll show you in a minute. Um, and on the end of this here, our water pressure is really strong here. So I've just got a pressure regulator, an irrigation pressure regulator. And that brings that pressure down. Um, and then you need that because um, when it was under heat with that ball cock, it was actually forcing heaps of water in there. And it would slowly fill it up. And it gets a bit inefficient when you've got sort of 30 litres of water in there you're trying to boil. But we'll, um, we'll show you on the inside now and show you just how it works. So this is the inside of the... Uh, the stock pot boiler. Um, you'll see there's a connector there where all the steam gets pumped out. There's a stainless ball cock and that keeps the, um, the, the water level um, just above the element and you can actually see the element down there. Now that element just mounts onto the wall with a, um, a tri-clamp fitting which a lot of people use for brewing as well um, and it works perfectly in the stock pot. Some of you might have noticed something very strange about this as well. It's actually hexagonal shape on the inside there. I'll tell you why it's done that in a minute. So the reason uh, the inside of my stock pot boiler has gone hexagonal is that it actually boiled itself dry on water. So the water was shut off, the element boiled off all the water in there and it just turned into a, um, a basically void of superheated metal. Now I came out thinking shit I need to I turned the power off and I was like shit I want to cool it down so I just turned the hose on to pump some water in there now I stood back thinking when that water goes in there and touches the metal it's going to instantly vaporize to steam and cause a great um, compression and pump all the steam out the top but it actually did the opposite and when that water went in there it instantly cooled the metal and the gas and that was enough I was watching this, it scared the shit out of me to nearly suck that lid straight into the middle and it started making these huge cracking sounds as the walls of the stock pot were pulled, pulled in one after another. So it sort of started imploding on itself simply from the decompression. Um, so that is one of the main reasons why I've actually isolated my element away from the bottom of the barrel which um, you'll see a lot of mushroom growers do. Um, and it's fine, um, but there is always that danger of having the element underneath the wood if the uh, water gets shut off. And in my case, um, it served me well. It's kind of like a, it's almost like a fail safe, I suppose. But um, I'm not too concerned because this stock pot, they're really cheap to get. And if anything, hap if anything happens where it breaks, all I do is I get a new pot, I drill some new holes, I um, make a new seal on the lid, and um, I throw another one together. So really simple.
Right, so my boiler's on now. You can't really see the steam coming out very well. If I actually just hold it to the concrete, you can see the moisture coming out now and um, uh, con condensing on that concrete. So all I need to do is simply plug it into there. Turn that on. And um, this will start filling with steam. We'll have a look. So you can see the steam getting pumped into that barrel now. So it doesn't take it long at all for uh, to uh, heat all that substrate up to uh, near 100 degrees.